The Mayflower Compact was the first governing document of Plymouth Colony. It was written by the male passengers of the Mayflower, consisting of separatist Puritans, adventurers, and tradesmen. The Puritans were fleeing from religious persecution by King James of England. The Mayflower Compact was signed aboard ship on November 11, 1620. They used the Julian calendar, also known as Old Style Dates, which was ten days behind the Gregorian calendar. Signing the Covenant were 41 of the ship's 101 passengers while the Mayflower was anchored in Provincetown Harbor within the Hook at the northern tip of Cape Cod. Reasons for the Compact The Mayflower was originally bound for the Colony of Virginia, financed by the Company of Merchant Adventurers of London. Storms forced them to anchor at the hook of Cape Cod in Massachusetts, however, as it was unwise to continue with provisions running short. This inspired some of the non-Puritan passengers whom the Puritans referred to as strangers to proclaim that they would use their own liberty, for none had power to command them. Since they would not be settling in the agreed-upon Virginia territory. To prevent this, the Pilgrims determined to establish their own government, while still affirming their allegiance to the Crown of England. Thus, the Mayflower Compact was based simultaneously upon a majoritarian model and the settlers' allegiance to the king. It was in essence a social contract in which the settlers consented to follow the community's rules and regulations for the sake of order and survival. The Pilgrims had lived for some years in Leiden, a city in the Dutch Republic. Historian Nathaniel Philbrick states, just as a spiritual covenant had marked the beginning of their congregation in Leiden, a civil covenant would provide the basis for a secular government in America. Topic text The original document has been lost, but three versions exist from the 17th century, printed in Mort's Relation 1622, which was reprinted in Purchase His Pilgrimage 1625, handwritten by William Bradford in his Journal of Plymouth Plantation 1646, and printed by Bradford's nephew Nathaniel Morton in New England's Memorial 1669. The three versions differ slightly in wording and significantly in spelling, capitalization, and punctuation. William Bradford wrote the first part of Mort's relation, including its version of the compact, so he wrote two of the three versions. The wording of those two versions is indeed quite similar, unlike that of Morton. Bradford's handwritten manuscript is kept in a vault at the State Library of Massachusetts. Modern version in the name of God, Amen. We, whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign Lord King James, by the grace of God, of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, King, Defender of the Faith, and C. Having undertaken for the glory of God, and advancement of the Christian faith, and the honor of our king and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia, do by these presents, solemnly and mutually, in the presence of God and one another, covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic, for our better ordering and preservation, and furtherance of the ends aforesaid, and by virtue hereof do enact, constitute, and frame name, such just and equal laws, ordinances, acts, constitutions, and officers, from time to time, as shall be thought most meet and convenient for the general good of the colony, unto which we promise all due submission and obedience. In witness whereof we have hereunto subscribed our names at Cape Cod the 11th of November, in the reign of our Sovereign Lord King James, of England, France, and Ireland, the 18th, and of Scotland the 54th, Anno Domini, 1620. The document was signed under the old-style Julian calendar, since England did not adopt the Gregorian calendar until 1752. 
the Gregorian date would be November 21. <laughs> Signers A list of 41 male passengers who signed the document was supplied by Bradford's nephew Nathaniel Morton in his 1669 New England's Memorial. Thomas Prince first numbered the names in his 1736 A Chronological History of New England in the form of annals. The original document has been lost, so Morton is the sole source for the signers. He probably had access to the original document, but he could not have known the actual order in which it was signed simply by inspecting it. Morton's arrangement of names might not have been the arrangement on the original document, and the names on the original may not have been arranged in any orderly fashion. Prince's numbers are based solely on Morton, as he himself stated. Morton's list of names was unnumbered and untitled in all six editions, 1669 to 1855, although their order changed with successive editions. In his original 1669 edition, the names were placed on two successive pages forming six short columns, three per page. In subsequent editions, these six short columns were combined into three long columns on a single page in two different ways, producing two different orders in unnumbered lists of signers. The second and third editions changed the order of the first edition by combining the first and fourth columns into the first long column, and similarly for the other columns. The 5th 1826 and 6th 1855 editions returned the names to their original first edition order by combining the first and second short columns into the first long column, and similarly for the other columns. Prince numbered the names in their original 1669 Morton order. He added titles Mr. or Capt. to eleven names that were given those titles by William Bradford in the list of passengers at the end of his manuscript. The following list of signers is organized into the six short columns of Morton 1669, with the numbers and titles of Prince. The names are given their modern spelling according to Morrison. Use the numbers for the order used by genealogists and half of unnumbered lists Samuel Fuller will be the eighth name, but merge the half columns vertically into full columns for the order used by the other half of unnumbered lists John Turner will be the eighth name. See also Fundamental Orders of Connecticut 1638 Instrument of Government 1653 List of Mayflower passengers List of Mayflower passengers who died in the winter of 1620 to 1621 Mayflower Mayflower Compact signatories Mayflower passengers who died at sea November December 1620